that's something that's really key there because people view time as almost sort of absolute as a as a sort of objective, right? Yeah, like it's spatial dimension. Yeah, people will view time as sort of objective, right? And the really interesting thing about that is that it just isn't like our understanding of time is so so subjective, like, so incredibly subjective, right? That you you the, the, we have so much evidence of this, right? The fact that what you've just said there, that that poll that Dodie did, that shows how it is subjective. If it was objective, then everyone would say the same thing. We'd have the same understanding and ways of describing it across cultures. No, our, our perception of time is subject, subjective. Mm. And yet people still fail to understand that others may have a different perception that leads to, you know, them acting in a different way, right? Like, you don't understand why someone is perpetually late. They should just make the effort to be on time because when you're late, you're late because kind of because you chose to be. Do you know what I mean? Like you made, you, you made decisions knowing that they would make you late or you did it by accident. And if someone does something so consistently, you're like, well, if you're doing it by accident, then stop the thing that's making you doing it by accident. But that's not the case, right? Because the thing that's making you do it by accident, in quotes there, is not being able to perceive time the way that other people do. So you can't, what, what can you do about that? You can, yes, get ready earlier, right? But I've spoken about this in a video, actually. You can get ready earlier, let's say. Let's say you've got to, you, you've got to leave in, in 30 minutes, right? So you could be like, okay, well, it takes me, um, it usually takes me like, you know, 20 minutes to get ready, so I should just start getting ready now. Mm. You can do that. And then you've got 10 minutes after you've finished getting ready. What do you do with those 10 minutes? You have to do something. You can't just sit and do, like, stare at a clock for 10 minutes, can you? Could do. You could do, uh, but you're probably going to get into doing something else, right? And then you're going to- if you get stuck doing that? <laughs> sure. If you get stuck doing that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well then, you just time it well so that you you know how long, maybe, maybe as well, it's, you know, you think you're going to take 20 minutes to get ready, but actually it takes you 30, maybe 35, right? You're like, oh, damn, because I forgot I had to do this, I forgot to do that, or this is taking me longer, or whatever, right? Um, well, you could just say, well, well, you know, be aware of how long it takes you to do things. And then plan for that. Cool. Great. If I do that, that doesn't mean I'm going to be on time necessarily because one, I need to remember to start doing it at the right time and set an alarm and get that done. And two, if I don't do it, like, you know, if I don't finish getting ready at the exact time I need to leave, there's still that buffer, that dangerous buffer zone of, again, losing time from getting like caught doing something else or not realizing that so much time has passed. Like, again, if this was such an easy thing to solve, people would have solved it already. Like people mm. aren't just going to be late and face the social consequences co consequences and stress of that if they're very easily able to solve it with an app on their phone, you know? What occurs to me here is I think if I could like red pill the world, what's the one thing, sorry, I'll take us on a tangent quickly. What's the one thing if you could red pill the world on? Like if everyone in the world could suddenly understand one thing, what would your thing be? Everyone in the world understand it and then they act accordingly with that understanding. Unless they have bad intent, yes. Pass. You give me yours and I'll think about it. Mine would be that I would love everyone to understand that they are living in their brain's best guess simulation of what's going on in reality mm -hmm. rather than living directly in reality. And that all the cues, all the signals that they think are obvious are only obvious because their brain constructed them and presented them to them. Mm, and yeah. that somebody else might have different signals and different cues because we're not living in reality. We're living, are we living in a simulation? That big old famous, well, not just Elon Musk question, but, but Elon Musk made it famous it recently. It, yeah. We are living in a simulation of our own minds. Yeah. Like that's, that, that's where we're all living. I'm living in my simulation, you're living in your simulation. And so and th that, those simulations try their best to be accurate and they try their best to incorporate all the useful information, but some people don't have all that useful information and sometimes our simulations are wrong. That would be my one of like red pilling the world. I think, yeah, mine is fairly similar. It's understanding things that aren't objective, knowing what is and is not objective. Sure. Whoa, right. the sub, okay, you know, Einstein. Well, like, yeah, understanding the, the concept of, like, social constructs and the subjectivity and sort of lack of reality of them. I mean, they all kind of tie in together to what, in, to what you're saying yeah. there, really, right? Yeah, yeah no, very, very good. I very much agree with you there, man. Will you take my red pill? Oh, I'll take your red pill all day, buddy. <laughs> every, every, all day, every day.